Let's start with Game 1 NBA Finals. Um, the short summation is Giannis wasn't expected to play by some. He did play. I was play. shocked. I was shocked. I got to do the Larry. I can't do the Larry. Were you shocked by what you saw? <laughs> oh, I was shocked he was out there. You were you were really surprised? Yeah, I was. I, Why? I just I, I didn't think like all the indications how coy they were. I just thought it was uh, and he looked fine, you know, as far as I mean, he didn't play great, but he looked fine like like there was no limitations. What, what did you see? You know, as a being a former I, basketball I just, player at a high level. I I didn't think did I think he moved perfectly? No, like in terms of his explosiveness. Um, uh, and, and But I, I thought the idea is if, if he's not hurt and he can play, you play because right. you're not – if you're going to try and steal one in Phoenix, um, you're not – I don't think it's going to be like a game two when all of a sudden, you know, uh, all of a sudden he hasn't played in a week, week and a half, and he play, you, you got to get a little bit of the rust out. you got to figure things out. I thought I don't even think that was the biggest factor in the game. No, he was not himself, but he was closer to himself than he was to being uh, injured. Right, so that that was was a little bit surprising, but not crazy. I mean, I I watched the video yesterday of him warming up, and it didn't look as explosive as normal, but it was pretty close. The big question is, how does he wake up feeling today? Right, if he's right, then he's a little sore because he played yesterday and he hadn't played in a week. If if it's all swole up, now we have ourselves a problem, and and they actually did work him back in far too early. I thought they managed his minutes in a smart way, in that um, you know they've always held his minutes down there, but to do it where it's always pretty long stents, th- that to me is the biggest mistake that people make. If you're going to play somebody, you got to play them early when they're warmed up, and you got to play them over long stretches of time. You know, until fatigue, and then you take him out when he gets tired. Um, but I, you know, like, look, he ends up with twenty and seventeen and uh, four assists and a plus one. He wasn't terrible. He wasn't. Re- they lost because they couldn't stop Phoenix. Their defensive coverage was just a terrible and matchup for stop, how Phoenix was playing. Right, Chris Paul, who just had another a historic night, another the old man uh, dialing up a big game. Uh, we saw it in Game uh, Six against. The Clippers, and now we saw it in game one of the finals. So he's playing as well as you can play, Doug, at least the last couple of games. So how do you stop him? I'd love to hear your what, – what should they do? I mean – Well, I, I, I mean, obviously having, having Brooke Lopez kind of switch on drop covers, that does not seem – it didn't work. It wasn't working against Trey Young in game one. And then they, they moved him up some, and it did, it did help, but – I mean, if if there's one thing Chris Paul does as well as anyone who's ever played the game, it's come off that come off a high ball screen going downhill and and make the correct read. For if you didn't watch Chris Paul, 32 points, nine assists, uh, he's 12 of 19 from the floor, and then DeAndre Ayton, who of course he's playing with in some of that action, has 22 points, 19 rebounds, and only misses two shots, eight, eight of 10. I mean, everything catching, finishing around the basket. Which is uh, I where thought, a good place for him to be. Perfect. Right. And then campaign came off the bench, and he's finally healthy. And remember how well he played. Um, I, I think that for Milwaukee, they're going to have to change the defensive coverage, and they're going to have to change the matchups. And I think one of the questions will be, can you go to Giannis at center, and then is it, is it Bryn Forbes who comes in and plays? Or, you know, or if you do Giannis at center, do you stick with P.J. Tucker? You know, P.J. wasn't terrible on offense, but Pat Connaughton gives you a little bit more, or... You can use Bobby Portis. The, the The issue becomes, you know, that that court gets really, really tight on offense when you have Giannis and Brooke Lopez, and they're not good enough defensively with those team, two. But the, the the type of coverage they were using was not working against Phoenix, and just like it did not work against Atlanta game one of the last series. Do Do you look at at uh, Giannis as winning in this situation, Doug? And I know obviously it's game one of the finals. Nothing has been determined uh, they could bounce back and win. I'm not just saying it's all over or whatever. Uh, but but does Giannis win in this from the standpoint that, you know, he didn't leave Milwaukee. He could have forced his way out. I know he had one year left on his contract. He could have told him, hey, I'm not coming back. If you want to get something, you better do it now and move on. And I want to go join other people. And instead, he stayed in a smaller market. He, he signed a big deal. And he's in the finals, what by hook or crook or, uh, you know, injuries to other players or whatever, however they got there, they're in the finals. 
Is this a validation for Giannis, though, uh, that he stuck around? And when and if he did win, Doug, would that elevate him somewhat? That he yeah. won a championship? He won an NBA championship. Market? Absolutely. I, I don't. I don't think. I think the small market thing is people. The people in the NBA talk about it, and I think people who cover the NBA talk about it. And and I I guess fans do some, but I I don't. I think it's more about staying and more about not joining the super team. Which is interesting because it's one of the things as fans will always say, like, we like that more. We don't like when you, okay, but will you watch the Bucks or would you watch, if he had joined I, I, I agree. the Knicks, the Lakers, whomever, would, would you watch that more? And the answer is, of course you would watch that more. So we are a bit hypocritical. And it's they've had a more than fortunate run here, as the Suns have had a more. Suns have had probably run. the most fortunate run. I, I call their run Fugazi. Because in every round, you know, between A.D. and Jamal Murray and uh, Kawhi Leonard and even Giannis, who wound up playing, and I'm not going to say he's hurt, he played, but they've had a nice run. It's not to take anything away from the Suns. It's just laying out the facts that things have fallen right their way. Um, I don't know. Everybody was saying the Lakers had control of the series after they went up 2-1, Doug. Do they you did, remember? Yeah. Yeah, right? Did, like yeah. it's they, oh, the Lakers have this. They're in control. And then AD gets hurt in, in the fourth game. And all of a sudden, everything changed. I, I truly believe if Kawhi Leonard was healthy, that the Clippers would be in the NBA Finals and not the Suns. I, I believe that. But, and Jamal Murray, we know Denver had done a nice job without him. But they ran out at, at some point, losing a star player, Doug, catches up to you. Am I right? At some point. And, and they had a nice run, and Jokic had done a great job, won the MVP, kept them winning. But ultimately, uh, you know, it, it didn't help in the end. So uh, it's Fugazi to me, but uh, it still counts. Yeah, I mean, look, look here's uh, – we talked about this some um, on, on my show. By the way, if you like uh, Rob Parker's on The Odd Couple, which is 7 to 10 Eastern time, 4 to 7 Pacific. I'm Doug Gottlieb. The Doug Gottlieb Show is tw- uh, 3 to 6 Eastern, 12 to 3 Pacific. Uh, right here on these Sirius XM stations and on uh, Fox Sports Radio and the iHeartRadio app. Um, but I, I think that um, uh, I, we, we, in the short term, like we have a mental asterisk for this season. Right? Right. Are you kidding me? Like, Jamal Murray didn't play. Anthony Davis got hurt. We go through all these guys. In, but it, it, in the long term, we don't. We just don't. When the Spurs won in the lockout short deer, right? I mean, one of the how many titles have uh, Tim Duncan won? Five titles, but five out of six, which is incredible. If if Ray Allen doesn't hit that shot, there's a good chance, Doug, that they win. That he goes six and zero. Oh. Yeah. So you knew they were going to come back the next year. And no, win? but I'm just. But but I'm. Yeah, they were good enough. All I'm saying is, that's how close he was for six for six. Oh, okay. Ray Allen but, hit but, one of the all time great But no shots one, in the no NBA. one ever mentions that they won the lockout year. Right, no, I it was, get it. Yep. right. No one ever, no one ever. Like we're not even mentioning that when the Warriors won their first title with Steph. Same you know, thing. Ky, Kyrie got hurt game one. Everybody, they had a ma- Kevin Love was hurt. Uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin Love was hurt. Right, no Kyrie, no Kevin Love, and I mean, but you go through other teams they played, and Mike Conley was hurt when they played against uh, all the guards were members. hurt. If I all remember, the, all, right. all the guards. Drew Holiday, I think, was was hurt when they played against. Uh, they like played against uh, New Orleans for two games. So there was, everybody was, was injured. Um, so, but nobody mentions that. Nobody mentions when, when Isaiah finally beat the Celtics, right? Larry Bird was hurt, didn't even play. So um, I, I, don't, I think in total, at the end of the day, three, four, five years from now, whoever wins the series it wins the series as an NBA champion. You don't take anything away from them. I, I agree with that. I'm not an asterisk guy. I'm just saying, but when you start to look, and it, to me it's only like when, you, when you're really diving deep into it. Like whoever wins will have an NBA championship. You can't take it from Chris Paul. You can't take it from Giannis. It'll be that they won in, in the year where there was a lot of stars that went down. So I agree with that, but, but it just doesn't feel, and you're right, mentally – there's something there that just doesn't feel that great about it. And it's not that Phoenix was some lucky team. They were the second best team in the West and they played well all year. But man, you, you just wish that people were healthy and we got to see the best players and whoever wins, wins. And, and it just feels easier to digest. Yeah. Uh, I would say game one, Chris Paul kind of destroyed Drew Holiday. Drew, Drew struggled. 
and um, and and the Bucks coverage did not appear to be the right one. Even they're trying to force Chris Paul to his left hand. He was he was slicing and dicing him. DeAndre Ayton was great. Booker was good. Giannis did move well, but they're going to have to make make a ton to make a ton of adjustments. That's that there's and and we'll see. And it's not something that. Mike Budenholzer has done a ton of that. That's what he's been accused of, of doing the same thing, just moving a guy up a little bit more in coverage. Although obviously they made some adjustments to end up taking down the Atlanta Hawks in the last series. 